Happy Nightmare Night, Halloween, or whatever you celebrate this day, everyone! I'm back again with another video, and this one is a real treat, not a trick. I hope you all want something with a cup of brilliant storytelling, a dash of colorful palettes, and a whole barrel full of blood, guts, and gore! Which is a warning for all of you, by the way. For those of you who can guess, we're looking at Gendy Tarakovsky's Primal, a brilliant work of creativity and silent storytelling. Well, I could go on for hours. We're looking at something else in this video. After examining the series for a while, I believe that there's something deeper the creators are trying to hint at. Something that if my theory is correct, then we're in for a story destined for tragedy. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wolf Tales, where literature runs wild. Much like my pride, Primal has been a gem to watch during quarantine, especially Episode 7's Plague of Madness. It's unique, creative, and has a continuous looming threat of violence and death at every turn. Primal is a show about a caveman and a dinosaur trying to survive after being bonded together by tragedy. Simple summary, but it's true! Each episode usually follows as such. Spear and Fang will find an area, discover there's something wrong with it, and then move on to the next area. There may be some variations about each episode, but the general goal of survival is the same. It's also through this goal where our theory stems from. That theory being that Spear and Fang will never find a perfect home or peace because they are destined to die at journey's end. Now for those skeptical, let me go over a few things I've noticed. While it's clear the creator is not afraid of going dark, he mentions something special in an interview he had a year ago. In an interview with Sci-Fi, called Primal First Look with Genny Tarakovsky, Tarakovsky mentions science and the primal world. The short answer of the interview is that with cavemen and dinosaurs already existing in the world at the same time, science can't really be applied into the show. He also mentioned how he never wanted to do violence for the sake of violence and that he wanted to tell a story with no true enemy. A story that looked at the darkness of the prehistoric age and the struggles it took to survive. Keep this last part in mind for later, but for the first part, he's right. Examining over the series, it's clear science was chucked out the window when designing things like the animal's appearance and which ones to put in the series. There are titan boas and mammoths living in the same time as modern day vultures, wild dogs, and warthogs. There also seems to be dinosaurs that should be covered in feathers, like Fang and the Velociraptors, that are featherless. It also seems like this world seems to go on forever with no end in sight. But why is knowing all of this important? How does knowing these things indicate anything to how these characters will die or why their journey will end in tragedy? Well, it actually has a bigger connection than you think. By seeing the show repeatedly willing to kill off characters without a second thought shatters our idea of plot armor for characters. In episode 1, we see the members of Fang and Spear's families killed in the blink of an eye. Traditionally, children and love interests are protected from most harm in stories, so most of us believe it unlikely for them to be harmed in animation. By shattering that belief, Primal is making a statement by saying, No one is safe. Not children, not innocent creatures, and not even Fang and Spear. No one in the show is ever doing malicious practices because they're diabolical. They're doing what they're doing because they're trying to survive. There's no ulterior motive to their work, they're just trying to live in a cruel and brutal world. So if it isn't mass extinction or a villain that's going to do it, then what will take the lives of our steadfast heroes? Well, for that answer, we'll have to turn to the most recent set of installments for the next clue in this theory, Primal Strange Magic System. Throughout episode 5 to 9, so far magic has been a strange turn for the world of Primal, where in the beginning, many like myself thought it was a magicless base alternate world, soon we were bombarded with the stuff. The Black Goo, the Plague, the Coven, the Night Feeder, all of these and more, I feel, kept being represented in Primal as if they were real. Well, as real as a world where cavemen ride dinosaurs. This got my brain churning as to why Prima would shift this way, and I was stumped. That is, of course, until Episode 8 came around and I saw the Sorceress. Her form, shape, design got me thinking. 
thinking about strange shapes and mysteries that we still do not know today. And that was some of the aspects reminding me of depictions shown in cave paintings. You see, there are many cave paintings across the world, some more famous than others. Some of those include the Sorcerer, the Aplingo cave paintings, and the Inuk cave paintings. Those three, mind you, look pretty similar to the Sorcerer's figure in the show when you examine them. Tall figures, horned antlers, and piercing eyes. But that wasn't all. In the Chauvet cave paintings, we see what appears to be anthropomorphic beings of a buffalo and a lion. Large muscular beings with animal heads on their bodies. Kind of reminds you of Krog after his transformation from the goo when he wore the skull of the Triceratops, perhaps? While it may be a stretch, I believe that Primal is trying to give us a fantastical answer as to why someone would draw said cave paintings. It's possible they're trying to make us think. If these things existed, how could our ancestors have evolved to fight them? Well, the answer in Spear and Fang's case is that most didn't and those who didn't were wiped out. And trust me, when you look at the facts, it shows. At a first glance, many would think Fang and Spear have a perfect 9-0 wins to loses, but that is only if you count it as a general whole. If you specifically look at how they won, not if they won, the story is different. Out of the nine episodes they appear in, four of them they won without any magic aids. The other five require them to gain the powers of others, had a lucky break, or learned by chance a way to fight the beasts. For their wins, most of the animals were normal animals like snakes and wild dogs. But for times like the coven, the ape men, the batman, the infected dino, and the mammoths, they were outclassed and outsmarted. While the mammoths were the only non-magical beings on the list, they still were incredibly intelligent compared to other animals. Overall, Spear and Fang often had to either rise up and use more advanced tools and magics available to them, or be killed at this point. For you see, this, dear watchers, is who holds Spear and Fang's fate in their hands. Evolution. As many know, for a species to survive and pass on their genes, the strongest of the species must adapt in order to do that. In the world of Prima, we are set in a world where many will die out by climate change or new adaptable species growing. I mean, Spear himself is a Neanderthal, a human species wiped out by their more developed neighbors, our ancestors. While I don't think druidic magic was how our ancestors adapted, we do see it is available in this world, and many humans are using it. The only ones who aren't, of course, are those like Spear and the sacrifice victim in episode 8, the Neanderthals. The more they are unwilling to adapt and embrace magic of this world, the more they will be left behind in the end. Until, of course, they meet a foe too powerful for them to beat and be wiped out. Which, with how things are going, might not be that long. Especially when you look at episode 10's description. In the season finale coming out tomorrow, the episode's titled Slave of the Scorpion. The description states, Spear and Fang are confronted by a far more developed human than they ever encountered before. Far more developed human, eh? It seems the gap between them and extinction is shrinking day by day, and soon they'll be swallowed up by it. While it is confirmed there is a second season where magic and evolution will play a major part, I think we're going to be looking at an even darker turn for our heroes. With the odds ever stacking against them, Spear and Fang I don't think will ever find a place where they can belong, except in death. And to be honest... I think that's the best ending they could possibly get. Let me explain. Spear and Fang both lost their families at the beginning of the series by the fangs of the Ceratosaurus. They are living in a world, cruel and unforgiving, where they could be the last remnants of their dying species. Life isn't easy, and we know they both are pained by the loss of their families. If both of their goals is to find somewhere peaceful to live out the rest of their lives, wouldn't they want to rejoin their families? Heck, the show might even be hinting at such a thing when we look at episode 8, where Lula, the good witch, sacrifices herself for them. In her death, 
Lula's reunited with her daughter, and she is finally at peace. So if we're looking for our heroes to have a truly good ending, wouldn't this be it? Honestly, I would say so. Especially when you look at what happened in episode 5, where they did find the utopia, only for the world to remind them how dark and cruel it is. Heck, even the show's description seems to paint this picture. At the dawn of evolution, a caveman and a dinosaur on the brink of extinction bond over unfortunate tragedies and become each other's only hope of survival in a treacherous world. The show has already been setting us up for death and failure from the beginning, but many of us, I think, were hoping for our classic hero's ending. In many stories, we want the hero to win, the villain to be slain, and the world to be as it should with peace and harmony. But there is no villain in Primal. There's no grand quest or magic artifact that needs to be returned. There's no great mystical journey that must be made or wrong that needs to be righted. It's just life. And sometimes life just isn't fair or nice. It's just life. And you can either learn to adapt with it and evolve, or be left behind in the dust of the past. And that was my theory! I hope you did enjoy the theory, and please go check out Primal. It's a brilliant series that deserves to be watched firsthand to get the best experience. If you like what you saw, please remember to like the video and subscribe to see more in the future. If you want to share your thoughts, please visit the comments below. For now, I'm gonna go see if I can spook a few people in the forest before getting ready for my next review. A review about a world filled with dust, rose petals, and silver eyes. Until next time, I'm Silver Starling, and thank you for joining me on Wolf Tales. See you next time you want to run with the pack.